pure goal scorer. When we hear this term, our minds usually gravitate towards the familiar names. Alex Ovechkin, the Golden Brett, Rocket Richard, and you might even stumble across the names like the famous Marcel Dion. And more recently, we think of guys like Austin Matthews. However, what if I were to tell you that there was a player out there whose goal scoring prowess surpassed all of those guys? A man who had one of the most legendary junior careers of all time, and one one of the best rookie seasons in NHL history. Furthermore, this player would go down as having the highest goals per game percentage ever, solidifying his status as a goal scoring phenom for one of sports greatest dynasties. Today boys, we're going to talk about a superstar that somehow gets left out of the conversation of greatest of all time, or more specifically the greatest goal scorer of all time, a true gentleman of the game. And if it wasn't for so many unfortunate injuries, we may very well be talking about Ovechkin potentially chasing his goal record. I'm talking about the boss himself. Mike Bossy. Born on January 22nd, 1957 in Montreal, Quebec, Mike Bossy emerged as the sixth child among ten born to his father Borden Bossy and his British born wife Dorothy. Hey, with such a sizable bloodline like that, they could practically field their own hockey team. At the age of three, Mike Bossy would take his first strides on the ice, spending countless hours engaged in street hockey battles and skating on a backyard rink lovingly crafted by his father. Even at such a young age, Bossy's talents on the ice set him apart as a phenom amongst mere mortals, literally. Legend has it, in one of the most incredible hockey tales ever, Bossy at the age of five astonishingly netted 23 goals in his first ever game. Imagine being at this game, you would probably think that this kid is pulling the old I am 12 routine. Years down the road, after this historic piece of bossy family lore, he would leave high school a year early in the 11th grade to embark on a 5 year journey in the QMJHL where he would play for Lavelle. And much like facing bossy when he was 5, it really felt like he was putting up 23 goals every single night against his opponents. And word would quickly spread through the league about the remarkable talents that this young kid possessed. And much like we've seen with the young Sidney Crosby in more recent times, Bossy would find himself constantly targeted by his opponents. He would become a marked man with a figurative bullseye on his back, endearing numerous cheap shots almost every game. However, despite his undeniable natural scoring ability, Bossy possessed some qualities that might have made NHL clubs hesitate to fully embrace him. Mike openly acknowledged that he didn't really prioritize the defensive aspect of his game, and he never engaged in fighting or aggressive physical play, two crucial qualities for thriving in the rugged environment of the late 70s and 80s NHL era. And I mean, it probably is challenging to focus on physicality and defensive play when you're constantly scoring and dominating possession almost every time you hit the ice, but I digress. Mike Bossy's junior career was truly remarkable. Over his five years spent in the queue, he netted an impressive 70 goals in every full season he played, including an incredible 84 goal campaign in 1975. And despite goaltending not really being up to par with what we have today, these feats remain undeniably impressive. Over his five years spent playing in Lavelle, Bossy amassed an astonishing 309 goals in just 200. 40 games. As the 1977 season drew to a close, it was time for Bossy to leave his mark on the NHL now. It was now Bossy's draft year. Despite boasting one of the most impressive junior careers in hockey history, quite literally one of the best junior careers we've seen from a guy not named Mario or Wayne, Bossy's draft stock suffered due to concerns about his lack of physicality, size, and defensive abilities. Consequently, many teams overlooked him, and to the surprise of many, Bossy would fall right into the hands of the New York Islanders, who would select him with the 15th pick in the first round of the 1977 NHL Draft. When Bossy would join the 
the Islanders, they were pretty bad. Like four years removed from having a season where they only won 19 games bad. They definitely didn't look like a team that was on the come up yet. However, under the guidance of legendary head coach Al Arbor, Bossy's potential would immediately be recognized. Arbor would strategically pair Bossy with another rising star, a young stud rocking one of the most beautiful mustaches the league had ever seen, one of the most complete players and winners the game would ever see in Brian Trottier, and alongside another future stud in the making in Clark Gillies. And this trio would later famously be dubbed the Trio Grande line, and little did Al Arbor know just how historic the line he would help put together would truly become, and just how horrifying this lineup would be for opposing goalies everywhere. And as soon as Bossy hit the ice for his rookie season, it became glaringly obvious that Bossy should have never been overlooked in the draft. I told him if I was to play regular, I was going to go out and get 50 goals. Once I got to training camp, uh, you know, that confidence just kept on building. The support of legends like Denny Potvan, Brian Trottier, Clark Gillies, Bobby Nystrom, and the goaltending prowess of Billy Smith, it would seem like adding Bossy to the mix elevated the Islanders' play tremendously, helping the Islanders win their first ever division title. Right from the beginning, Bossy showcased the extraordinary talent that would define his career, running his way into the hearts of Islanders fans everywhere, putting up 15 goals in his first 25 games, ultimately becoming the first rookie to ever score 50 goals. His remarkable performance earned him the Calder Trophy as the league's top rookie, firmly establishing his name as the standout newcomer in the NHL. Unfortunately though, the young Islanders weren't ready just yet. They were taught a tough lesson when they were shockingly upset by the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round of the playoffs in seven games. Back when the Leafs could win Game 7s, I guess. Despite the loss, Bossy contributed with two goals and two assists during the seven game playoff series. Heading into the 1979 season, one might expect Bossy's production to decline. After all, teams were surely more prepared for his scoring, and his reputation around the league was well established now. Many anticipated that he would fall victim to the dreaded sophomore slump. Oh, they couldn't have been more wrong. People really need to stop overlooking this guy. And Bossy did not slump at all. By the all-star break, Bossy had already notched an impressive 35 goals, and by the end of the season, he'd amassed a staggering total of 69 goals in just 80 games, leading the Islanders who topped the league in goals scored. Their outstanding performance earned them the President's Trophy for the best record in the entire league. Bossy's continued dominance was a key factor in the Islanders' success. However, much like the previous year, the Islanders' regular season dominance didn't translate to postseason success. Despite starting the playoffs off strong with a first round sweep over the Blackhawks and another impressive showing from Bossy who notched 6 goals in 10 games, the Islanders would suffer a defeat in the second round against the New York Rangers, better known at the time by Isles fans as the 1940s in 6 games. The best season that the Islanders franchise had had up until that point had just ended in disappointment, as they would fail to win that final game of the season yet again. 
but the Young Islanders team would remain positive. They were still regarded as a formidable force in the league, a true wagon. The following 1980 season would see Bossy's production take a hit, only scoring 51 goals that year. Imagine being so damn good that 51 goals is considered an off year. The Islanders would also take a noticeable step back, finishing second in the division that year, a far cry from the team that won the Presidents last year and had the best offense in the league. But this Islanders team was different, and they seemed to possess a different mindset compared to the previous years. They were determined to prove themselves and rise above the disappointments of years past. And what truly separates good players from great players, Bossy in particular, appeared to approach his defeats as opportunity for growth and learning, instead of taking them as mere losses. And this resilience and determination would prove to be crucial as they embarked on their postseason journey. Just his third season in the league, Mike Bossy had just cemented himself as a Stanley Cup hero, saving his best performances for the playoffs that year. He showcased his clutch gene like never before by scoring 10 goals in the 16 game playoff run, ultimately leading the Islanders to clinch their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. And as remarkable as that achievement was, we were just getting started. This was just the beginning beginning of Bossy's legendary career, and the following season would be one for the history books. By November of the 1981 season, through Bossy's initial 239 games in the league, he scored a staggering 181 goals, and at the time he was averaging around 0.785 goals per game. And as he approached his 50th game at the Nassau Coliseum on January 24th, 1981, Bossy would find himself on the cusp of tying a nearly four decade old record set by the legendary Maurice Rocket Richard. And you all know the record I'm talking about, the 50 and 50 record, 50 goals throughout the first 50 games of the season. A record only achieved by Maurice Rocket Richard at the time. With 48 goals in his previous 49 games, Bossy would need just two more goals to etch his name in the NHL history books. For most of the game, it looked as though Bossy would fall just short, but nearing the final five minute mark, he picked up his 49th tally of the season. Then, with just 89 seconds remaining, Bossy would be immortalized in hockey history forever. Now just four years into Bossy's career, he had already reached legendary status. 
This also marked a full circle moment for Mike, as Maurice Richard had been a childhood hero of his. The Rocket even sent Bossy a telegram congratulating him on tying his record. And before the likes of Brett Hall and Wayne Gretzky put up 50 and 50, we had Mike Bossy, further proving he really might just be the most pure goal scorer we'd ever seen in this sport. An incredible milestone that I doubt we'll ever see replicated in today's NHL. I don't think we'll ever see anybody else score 50 goals through their first 50 games of the season. Mike Bossy possessed a unique combination of skills that set him apart from his peers. His exceptional ability to find open space and release his shot with lightning speed was truly a gift. And despite not being that overpowering, Bossy had a knack for getting his shot off faster than anybody else in his era, a quality that would separate him from the rest. Al Arbor would emphasize this aspect, stating Bossy's quickness in releasing his shot was unparalleled. Arbor even went as far as to say that Bossy was the quickest he had ever seen at getting his shot off. This quick release combined with his underrated skating ability, remarkable playmaking skills, and unmatched stick handling made Bossy one of the most lethal goal scorers in the league. In 1981, Mike's remarkable career just continued to get better and better. And I guess achieving a lifetime's worth of accomplishments in less than five years in the league and tying his idol's goal record just wasn't enough. It would just be the chef's kiss for what was to follow. Bossy really had the perfect season. The New York Islanders would go on to clinch their second consecutive Stanley Cup championship, knocking out the Minnesota North Stars in five games. On top of all the team's success, Bossy's individual performance was nothing short of extraordinary. He netted 68 goals in 79 regular season games, including 9 Hatties, setting the stage for his true display of dominance in the playoffs. Bossy would somehow find a way to elevate his game to another level, scoring a jaw-dropping 17 goals in just 18 postseason games. Nine of these goals came on the power play, further solidifying the argument that Bossy might have been the greatest pure goal scorer the game had ever seen. In 1982, Bossy experienced the pinnacle of his career in terms of point production, tallying an outstanding 147 points in 80 games, with 64 of those points coming from goals. At this point, it almost became expected for Bossy to score around 60 goals every year Additionally, the Islanders solidified their status as a dynasty, breaking the hearts of the Canucks fans everywhere by sweeping them in the finals and becoming only the fifth team in league history to achieve a three-peat. Bossy played a pivotal role in their success again, scoring seven goals in the sweep against the Canucks including a crazy game one of the finals where he would tie the game in the dying minutes and score the overtime winning goal to cap it off. Oh yeah, he also had another 17 goal postseason run. Bossy's exceptional performance would earn him the Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoffs MVP, something some would argue he should have already won. The following year, we would see Bossy achieve some three-peats of his own. It was his third consecutive season score scoring 60 or more goals, a feat matched only by the great one himself. Additionally, Bossy replicated his impressive postseason performance for the third straight year, scoring 17 goals during the playoff run, including a four-goal game against the Bruins in the 83 Conference Finals, helping the Islanders solidify their status as one of the greatest dynasties in sports history by capturing the Stanley Cup in a sweep over Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers. Bossy would also be recognized for his sportsmanship, taking home his first of three Lady Bing trophies as the league's cleanest player. Bossy was such a classy guy, he even once stated that he would never drop the mitts. Now the following year, it seemed like the NHL might be witnessing its second ever five-peat, which arguably would have made the Islanders the greatest dynasty the sport had ever seen. Bossy was bossy that year. He continued 
continued his remarkable play, scoring his usual 50 goals with 51 in 67 games. However, the young Oilers team that they had swept the previous year was also on the rise, and poised to start a dynasty of their own. The Islanders started the playoffs strong, securing series wins over the Rangers, the Capitals, and the Canadians. And in the process of doing this, they set the record for the most consecutive playoff series wins with 19. And that's what you call an unbreakable record, folks. And if you were a player on this Islanders team, you probably felt like you were never going to lose again. However, every dog has its day, and this Edmonton team was just way too much to handle. And in a series that served as a passing of the torch moment, Edmonton ultimately defeated the Islanders in five games, capturing their first ever Stanley Cup, putting an end to one of the greatest runs we will ever see. As the years went on, Bossy would just continue to make a case for being the greatest pure goal scorer the game had ever seen. With 58 goal seasons in 1985 and a 61 goal season in 1986. And through Bossy's first nine years in the league, not a single season went by where he didn't record at least 50 goals. A feat that remains unmatched and is arguably unbreakable. At this stage in Bossy's career, it was not a matter of if he would become the league's all-time goal leader, a record held by Gordy Howe, but when he would become the all-time goals leader. And on January 2nd, 1986, Bossy became the fastest player at the time to reach 500 goals, doing so in 647 games. Heading into the 1987 season, Bossy had scored 535 goals in 689 career games. Numbers most of us couldn't put up in be a pro mode if we wanted. But just when we were getting started, just when it started to look like we might be witnessing the first player to ever reach 900 career goals, the next goal scoring king? In 1987, something was up with Mike. It would appear that chronic knee and back problems would really start to affect Mike's play during the 1987 season, preventing Mike from doing what he did best score goals. For the first and only time in his career, Bossy fell short of the 50 goal mark, recording just 38 goals in 63 games. Although a lot of this had to do with him sitting out with these injuries, and 38 still being a respectable total for pretty much any other player, they pale in comparison to Bossy's usual prolific scoring rates. Bossy recalled that his back problems first surfaced on the first day of training camp that year, and progressively worsened as the season went on. With a combination of the back and knee problems, Bossy had troubles even tying up his skates, resulting in his mobility being severely compromised, which uncharacteristically resulted in Bossy taking a lot more penalties. It wasn't known at the time, not even thought of, but after the Islanders were eliminated by the Flyers on May 2nd, 1987, it would mark the last time Mike Bossy would ever play the game of hockey. Bossy's determination to come back for the 1988 season was evident as he explored every possible avenue for his recovery. However, despite undergoing various medical therapies, his condition showed no signs of improvement. And in the fall of 1988, Bossy announced that he would be sitting out for the entire season. Bossy had hopes of finding relief from his chronic back pain and knee problems, but unfortunately despite his efforts, he couldn't find anything to alleviate the pain. The exact cause for these injuries would always remain a mystery. It's possible that the years of physical abuse from opponents, the grueling schedule of playing over a hundred games for five consecutive years, and all the wear and tear on the body that comes with that, ultimately these questions remained unanswered. Because in October of 1988, at just 33 years old, these injuries ultimately caused Mike Bossy to retire from the game of hockey, putting an end to one of the greatest careers the game had ever seen far too soon. I didn't want to be ordinary. I didn't want to go out and only play half the games because of my bad back. Not playing the way that I knew that I could was just discouraged me to the point where I said, I'm not going to play. 
Following his early retirement, Bossy went back to where it all started, moving back to Lavelle, prioritizing his role as a family man to his two daughters, Tanya and Josanne, and be there for his loving wife, Lucy. Although he could no longer play hockey anymore, he still remained involved in the game behind the scenes. Teaming up with his agent, Pierre Lacroix, Bossy ventured into the business side of hockey, working for the stick brand Titan, and eventually rising to the position of vice president. He would also spend some time in the broadcasting booth, providing commentary for the Nordiques, the team he famously clinched his 50th goal in 50 games against. Bossy displayed a keen eye for business opportunities, branching out into the insurance industry at one point, and representing the company Cummins in a public relations role. Additionally, he discovered a passion for public speaking, which would lead to a successful radio stint, and by 1993, Bossy had entered the radio industry. By 1994, he was hosting his own talk radio show in Quebec, and with his natural well-spoken charm, Bossy was a natural fit for this role. In 1991, Bossy was rightfully inducted into the Hockey Hall of fame. A bittersweet moment for sure, as it underscored the fact that he should still be playing the game at the highest level. And on his Hall of Fame plaque, he would fittingly get the title of the greatest pure goal scorer. Mike Bossy left a lasting mark on the sport of hockey, with some of the most iconic moments and impressive stats in NHL history. In his 129 playoff games, Bossy tallied an outstanding 85 goals and 75 assists, showcasing his ability to perform under pressure when it mattered the most. One of his most remarkable achievements was being the only player in NHL history to score the winning goal in every game of a single playoff series, a feat he would accomplish in the 1983 conference finals against the Bruins. In eight of his ten seasons played, Bossy would be an all-star. Throughout his career, Bossy displayed unparalleled scoring prowess, amassing 573 goals and 500 153 assists in just 752 games. He finished his career averaging 57.3 goals a season. When he retired, he had the highest goals per game average and he still holds that record today. Mike always wanted to be considered a great overall player, but he had a gift from God, and he will definitely be remembered for his ridiculous scoring output. I didn't expect any of this, Bossy said. About 90% of the time, I didn't even aim. I would just try to get my shot off as quick as possible as a surprise element. I just tried to shoot the puck on net, and nobody, not Alex Ovechkin, Brad Hall, Maurice Richard, or even Wayne Gretzky, would ever equal Bossy's run of 9 consecutive 50 goal seasons. There have been so many pure goal scorers to have played the game of hockey, and when you look at how dominant Mike Bossy was at finding the back of the net in the regular season, and when it mattered the most in the postseason, you can definitely call Mike Bossy the greatest pure goal scorer the game has ever seen. And if he didn't have to retire so soon into his career, I think it's safe to say we would also be calling him the all-time goals leader. Sadly, on April 15th, 2022, the hockey world would suffer one of its biggest losses. Gone way too soon, at just the age of 65, Mike Bossy would pass away after his six-month battle with lung cancer. Mike Bossy's legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of fans everywhere. Because at the end of the day, heroes get remembered, but legends never die.